As the days go by, the Colts are getting closer to playing football again. We're finally going to have a game this Sunday against the Buccaneers. And I want to go through this injury report with you guys. And we're starting with, I mean, the, the Buccaneers here have some pretty big name guys. Levante David has a groin injury, did not practice. And I got to tell you, if he's not there, that's going to be huge for us. He is a very good linebacker, has been for a long time. You also have Carlton Davis, who is a limited participant with a hip injury. But also Jamel Dean, who did not practice with an ankle and a foot injury. And earlier today, Ian Rappaport put out a tweet about Jamel Dean saying, the Bucks appear to have dodged a bullet with Jamel Dean. Sources say that the ankle injury he suffered against the 49ers has him week to week. And while he might miss time, it's not considered to be a long-term injury. Based on what it looked like initially, that's good news. So... He avoided major injury. That's great. You like to see guys avoiding those major injuries. But it does sound like he's going to miss time, and that starts with us here this week. Jamel Dean being out, pretty big deal. He is another guy, really good player. Carlton Davis, he was a limited participant. If he continues to practice this week, I assume he's going to play. He's a really good player, too. So if both those guys happen to be out, definitely advantage Colts. Um, and, again, Levante David, you throw him in there. Those are three really good players on their defense. And if those guys aren't there, got to tell you, you know, our offense has a chance to come out of the bye week, look really good. So we'll keep tracking what's happening with these guys as the week goes on, of course. But again, the first three here all on defense. We have Levante David not practicing. We'll see what happens there. Jamel Dean looks like he's going to miss this game for sure. Carlton Davis looks like he has a chance to play. But as we go on here with the Bucks, they have Chris Godwin, who I don't know about you guys, but not only is Chris Godwin really good in his own right, but in 2018, the Buccaneers were playing the Colts. The Colts came down to Tampa Bay. They played the Colts. They played the Buccaneers. And that game was electric. Ended up 38-35. Jameis Winston throws for like 450 and five touchdowns. And Chris Godwin was a big reason for that. He was tearing up those zones in that Eberflus defense. So Chris Godwin, you know, if he's out for this game, that would, again, be definitely advantage us. He's dealing with a knee and an elbow injury. So we'll see what happens with him, but he was a limited participant. Then they have another limited participant and a full participant in Robert Hainsey, the center, and Ryan Neal, free safety. But then the other big names on this list are Devin White, another linebacker. He's dealing with a foot injury. He did not practice. Another guy, if he's not there, that's a big deal for us. But then Tristan Wirfs. He's on there with an ankle injury as a full participant. He's probably going to be able to play. And really, outside of Tristan Wirfs, I feel pretty good about our defensive line against the rest of that offensive line. So, you know, he's going to be there, which is a big deal for them. But they have a lot of guys on this list that if they don't play on Sunday, that is a massive advantage for the Colts. Because the Colts coming in, I mean, we have plenty of guys on the IR. We can't shy away from that. Plenty of big-name guys on the IR. Right, We just released Shaq. So the guys that we have here, we only have five guys on our injury report. Juju Brent still not practicing. Drew Ogletree also not practicing yet. I'd like to have updates on those and, and know exactly what's going on with those. You know, when Juju Brent initially went down, the way he was holding it, the way he was moving on the ground and wincing about it, like I, I thought it might be something – that that was going to take some time. But coming out of the bye week, I was really hoping he was going to be able to at least start to get back on the field, you know, do some solo drills and be a limited participant in that way. But right now, he's still not on the field. I'd love to know what's going on with him. I'd also like to know exactly what's going on with Drew Ogletree. At what point is he going to be able to get back on the field? This is a guy that's really good as a run blocker, but we've also seen him make plays as a pass catcher. So I'd like to know what's going on. When does it look like we might get him back? As soon as there are answers for that, I'll get those to you guys. But the next guy showing up here is Grant Stewart, linebacker with an illness. And presumably that's who's taken over for Shaq. When Shaq missed some time earlier this year, that's who stepped in was Grant Stewart. So I would expect that and that's where we're going to see this upcoming game. And we're going to need him to come back to practice and be able to play. He was good in, in relief of Shaq and, and kind of there after the preseason. There was talk about should Grant Stewart, you know, split time with Shaq. That was an actual conversation that was happening. So, you know, with Grant Stewart coming in, think he'll be able to pick it up. It won't be perfect, but I do think Grant Stewart will be able 
to come in and have an impact on this defense. And another part of the defense that's on this injury report is free safety Rodney Thomas with a knee injury. He was a limited participant on Wednesday. I would assume he's tracking to play. They're just being cautious with their guys right now. But if anything changes or anything comes out about him missing time, I will definitely let you guys know as soon as I can. And then Ryan Kelly shows up on the injury report with a concussion. And this is more of a technicality thing. He has to get a couple practices under his belt and then get cleared by the NCU. So I assume that's going to happen again coming off the bye. I would assume that's going to happen. And when it does, again, I will definitely let you guys know as soon as I can. And just a last little note here uh, about Shaq. Shaq did clear waivers. He's free to sign with any team. And we had talked about yesterday, last night, about how Shaq, like the teams that I think he would go to, like I, I mentioned the Eagles um, as a team that I think would have interest in him because their entire defense is set. They just need some solid linebackers. So I think that's an option. And it turns out that the Eagles – and the Cowboys are the two teams that currently have the most interest in him and are going to be trying to get him. He's a free agent. So we'll see what happens. I'd like to see him have some success somewhere. Um, if he ends up on the Eagles, man, a lot of chance to have success there with everything that would be around him on that defense. So you let me know what you think of that down in the comment section. If you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you get notified when more updates come out. And until next time, as always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and go Colts.